If you film with your mobile phone and you tend to shoot outdoors a lot, capturing footage of your locations, then in this video, I'm gonna show you seven really easy gimbal moves that will make even the most boring locations look epic. And I'll also share a pro tip with you that you can use for every single shot. I'm gonna be using my iPhone 15 Pro Max and it doesn't matter what phone you use, you can use any phone for this, but I'm also going to be using the Smooth 5S AI. Now, before I get onto the gimbal moves, let me tell you a little bit about this gimbal because this video is sponsored by and one of the new features of this gimbal is actually going to be one of the moves that I show you for the simple gimbal moves. The Smooth 5S AI is a three axis stabilization gimbal and it can hold a payload up to 300 grams, which means that if you like to use filters or lenses with your phone, then you'll be able to do that and the gimbal is going to balance absolutely fine. And for the footage that I'm going to show you for this video, I'm actually going to be using a diffusion filter to give the footage a slightly dreamy look. But if you want to go for that really cinematic look as well, then you could even use an anamorphic lens. And again, the gimbal would be absolutely fine and be able to take the weight of it, no problem. You could also attach an external mic if you wanted to speak to the camera as well and have good audio, and the gimbal is still gonna be able to handle that payload as long as all of this is less than 300 grams, as I mentioned earlier. Now, probably one of the most useful features of any gimbal as a solo creator is having the ability to operate it whilst you're not even next to it, as well as being able to move around and keep yourself in the frame, which is almost impossible if you don't have someone helping you, unless the gimbal has AI tracking and gesture control like this gimbal. So you see this little module here, this is the AI tracker, and this is what also allows you to use gestures to start and stop recording as well. It just fits here on the phone mount and you just press the button to turn it on. Then you do the gesture for whatever you want to do with the gimbal. And this is also gonna work no matter what camera app you're using. And it's probably one of the biggest benefits of having a tracker like this, which is a module, because it means that you don't have to rely on the proprietary camera app that comes with the gimbal or that you'd use with the gimbal. One of the other benefits of this gimbal is the fact that you can actually flip the phone in a way that the gimbal doesn't show if you want to shoot an ultra wide angle shot, whether that's you using a dedicated wide angle lens or the ultra wide angle lens of your phone. Because typically you'd see the arm in the shot, but if you quickly tap the trigger button four times, then the arm of the gimbal is basically going to move out of the way, which is really great. Also, another thing that I wanted to mention really quick is the fact that the gimbal has a fill light on the arm which is handy in situations where you need a little bit more light and it can actually go quite bright. You can also get an additional modular light, so kind of like the tracker as well, which you can put on the reverse of the phone mount. I don't have that, so I can't show you, but it literally looks like the AI tracker and it's just a light, a modular light. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you seven of my favorite easy gimbal moves that I use in boring locations just to get great footage. So you know how I said earlier in the video that I was gonna use a diffusion filter with my phone? I forgot to put it in my bag when I came out, so I won't be using a diffusion filter, but as you saw, it balances with one easily. Oh, so annoying. I thought, I was looking around my office and I thought, what, there's something I've forgotten. And it was that, and also the anamorphic lens because there's a clip in the beginning where I was gonna show you the anamorphic footage and just put the anamorphic lens on here to get the shot outdoors. And I forgot the anamorphic lens. So I'm gonna to have to go back home and do that again. Okay, so for the first easy gimbal move, I'm not gonna be holding the gimbal at all. All I do is set the gimbal down, enable tracking and walk to where I wanna start my action. I'm gonna be walking across the frame and have the gimbal track me in the location. Then when I'm where I wanna be, I'll simply start recording with a gesture and then I'll walk, then I'll stop recording with a gesture and then I'll have a shot that looks like someone else filmed me. And so for the second gimbal move, this is perfect for getting a fake drone shot. So all I do is switch to the ultra wide angle lens of my phone. I set the gimbal mode to follow and then hold the gimbal up quite high. And for added reach, I even use the quarter inch hole at the bottom of the gimbal to attach an extension pole and then just walk forward or backwards to show off the location. And that way I get a fake drone perspective. Okay. 
Okay, this next shot is a great way to reveal a location or a landmark and it's a jib reveal. I either do this in an upward motion or a downward motion and as an upward motion I'd likely be revealing a building or a landmark and then with the downward movement I use it more to reveal landscapes that are out in front of me. This next shot is simple to do and is a great shot to use if I want to close out a sequence like I'm leaving a location for example and I just want to show it in its entirety one last time. So this is the pullback and all I do for this is have the wide angle lens selected and just slowly walk backwards. And so the reverse of the pullback is the push-in, which is a great way to establish a location by showing the viewer that I'm actually in a specific location. So all I do is again, have the wide angle lens selected and slowly walk forwards. This next shot is one that I tend to do if I want to show a bit of nature and it's mainly for if I'm shooting the canopies of the trees and it's basically a spin shot. All I do is hold the gimbal up above me, I tilt it so that the camera is pointing directly upwards and then I slowly push on the joystick to turn the gimbal in a circular motion. This gimbal move is probably one of my favourites and it's one that I use quite often and it just works so well in a few instances. It's great for revealing a landscape or a location but paired with revealing from behind an object it can be a great establishing shot as well. So all I do for this is start with the phone behind an object and then I slide left or right to reveal what's beyond the out of focus object that's in the foreground. And to make sure that the focus doesn't jump from the foreground object to the background, I lock the focus onto the background first. And I do that by positioning the phone to capture the background and then I'll tap and hold on the screen and then just move the camera back to behind the foreground object and it'll look blurry. So did you notice that the majority, or at least a lot of the clips that I did, had one thing in common and I basically try to create depth and create layers with the scene. So when I framed up the shots I try to create depth by using foreground objects and to achieve that look all I had to do was make whatever was in the foreground blurry just like I did for the last gimbal move and it's just a really great way to give a greater sense of movement to the shot as well especially if you're shooting with a wide angle lens. So if you want to try out these moves and you're also looking for a new gimbal, I've dropped a link in the description to the Smooth 5S AI.